in my graduate school days, I had the privilege of doing the initial evaluation of the breathalyzer. Uh, when it was first developed, it was quite expensive, and they didn't carry them around in police cruisers. Uh, they were held at the police station, and uh, uh, the policeman at the scene of the accident, for example, would ask the uh, some of the people involved to blow into a rubber a latex rubber balloon and by the time they got at the police station and did it, analyzed it in the breathalyzer they found there was no alcohol in the breath so some of the initial studies we did we did a half life or the time that it takes for alcohol to leak out of the rubber and found in the rubber balloons that the in 15 minutes half of the alcohol in there is gone so we made uh, bags that they could use and collect the alveolar air which is the last portion of air that you blow out and so they could uh, uh, fill those up at the scene of an accident get them into the police station and uh, test them and they were pretty accurate during the second world war edgewood arsenal was known as one of the best uh, research uh, institutions in the world and they had a magnificent inhalation facility and some of the principles that we still use at inhalation toxicology were developed here by Cy Silver who was the uh, director of research at the time and I was fortunate I had the opportunity after coming here to meet uh, Dr. Silver and it had the reputation of being as I said really great and during the second world most of the very famous and well-known pharmacologists and toxicologists in the United States spent their time spent time here during World War II, and it had a great reputation. And when I heard that the uh, the position was available, I just jumped at the chance. My career here has really been exciting. I came here as the director of toxicology, and the, then I became the chief scientist for life sciences. We have a lot of very intelligent and very hardworking scientists here on staff. Uh, I've delved into several areas and uh, the work I was doing benefited not only the soldier but the civilians and it's really exciting to know that you can have an impact like that and now I've gotten into a very exciting field uh, into stem cells and I've been running the National Research Council postdoctoral program here for about 20 years and that's been very exciting bringing these young folks in to spend uh, some time after they yes, get their they doctoral large. degree that's and true. we've hired a lot of them because they're really terrific kids. Stem cells are in most of the tissues in our body and one of the interesting things and the things that we're looking forward to in the future is how do you turn them on when you need them to rebuild some of the damaged organs that we have in our body and what we're trying to do now we're trying to use stem cells, which we, we, we're not using embryonic stem cells. We're getting them from skin. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop a human on a chip or in a well. And we'll connect these uh, either by microfluidics or other ways so that they go through the various organs like they do in the body. And so hopefully we'll get a, a more realistic picture of what happens in humans.